Now having looked in some detail at merge sort, we want to come back to quick sort, which was the other divide and conquer sorting algorithm we mentioned earlier. Quick sort is quick sort works by starting with the list, choosing a particular element to be what's called the pivot element. Let's say it's the first element of the list. By means of some clever procedure, putting that element in the correct place, by which we mean it ends up in a position such that everything coming before it in the list is actually no bigger than it, and everything coming after it in the list is at least as big as it. So the elements which are big relative to the pivot are to the right, the elements which are small relative to the pivot are to the left. So it itself is in the right position in the sense that if we then recursively sort the left and the right sublists, we don't have to move that element that we just put in. So the algorithm works by repeated partitioning on various sublists, choosing an appropriate element each time to put into its correct position. Now how do we do this? How do we actually partition? And this is a tricky question, right? We want to do this efficiently. Ideally, we would like to just scan through the whole list once and do it. We don't want to do too much extra work. We don't want to be looking at elements over and over again. So just as we merge in linear time, we want to be able to partition in linear time. Now there's several ways to do this. There's at least two main algorithms you'll see in books. Here I'm going to talk about the original one, what's called Hawes partition algorithm. So it's tricky, but it works something like this. We have our list here. So let's just suppose, as Quicksort normally does, the basic version, we pick the first element to be the pivot. That's going to end up somewhere in its right position. We want to do this all in place, if we can, inside this list. So what we do, using Hoare's algorithm, is we start a little pointer here, and we start a little pointer here. Just past the end of the list, one of them at the beginning, where the pivot is, one of them just past the end. Now what we want to do is get rid of elements that are too big on the left and too small on the right, and put them in the right place. So what we do is we advance the pointer until we find an element that's too big, let's say here, too big compared to the pivot. Then we advance the right one until we find an element that's too small. And then we swap them. Now the small element has gone to the left, the large element's gone to the right. Then we keep doing that, again moving the left pointer, and then the right one. When we get to a point where the pointers have crossed, we stop. And then we know that in fact the right pointer is pointing to the place where the pivot should go. It's best to see this by means of an example, so here we go. Now let's have a look at Hoare's partition algorithm. I'm going to pivot about the first element here. We start with our left and right pointer. Advance the left pointer till we find a large element. Advance the right pointer till we find a small element. And swap them. Keep going. There's a large element. There's a small element. There's a large element. There's a small element. Swap them. There's a large element. There's a small element. They've crossed. Swap the pivot into its correct place. And we're done. 
So here's some pseudocode for Hall's partition method. We take a list of size n and indices i and j pointing into the list. We are going to partition the sublist starting at i and ending at position j using the pivot element a of i, the first element of the sublist. Then we want to do the entire list. We will just call this with i equals 0 and j equals n minus 1. This is so we don't have to do an explicit recursion, a lot of recursive calls. We'll do it all in place in the original list. So we first choose the pivot element, then the left pointer is pointing to it, the right pointer is just past the end of the list. We increase the left pointer till we find an element which is at least as big as the pivot. We then decrease the right pointer until we find an element which is no bigger than the pivot. If they haven't already crossed, we swap those elements. We push the large element to the right and the small element to the left. Otherwise, if we've crossed, we stop. There's nothing more to do except to swap the pivot element into its correct position. Now let's try out quicksort with the naive pivot choice of always choosing the first element of the particular list we're looking at. This is the pivot element. Let's go through the first pass of partition quickly. Move along until we get to a large element. Here's a small element. Swap them. Large, small. They've crossed. So swap. There we go. Pivots in the correct place. Now we've got two cursive subcalls. Let's look on the left first. Take this as the pivot. Advance till I find a large element. Advance this till I find a small element. They've crossed. So swap. Now look here, size 1, so there's nothing much to do there. Here is size 2, here's the pivot element. Advance till I find a large element, advance till I find a small element, swap that in, it's already done. So that whole thing is now sorted. Now here, here's the pivot, move till I get a large element, advance till I get a small element, and nothing much to do there. They've crossed, so swap this into the right place. And that's done. That was a fairly quick quicksort on that input. Here's some pseudocode for quicksort, basic version. You have the input list. You have i less than equal to j. Those are indices. As long as we have a non-trivial sublist to sort, so i is less than j, then we pick the pivot element. This is the simplest version of quicksort, so it just chooses the leftmost element, first element of the list. We then use this auxiliary partition function, which does all the work, which partitions the sublist between elements i and j inclusive, and puts p in its correct position. Then once p is in its correct position, you have a left and a right sublist. One of them starts at i and goes up to q minus 1, where q is the position that uh, the pivot element ends up in, the correct position. And then the right sublist starts at q plus 1 and goes up to j. So the sum of those two list sizes is one less than the original list. You sort those in place. You don't need to do anything more. So again, here we are with the questions. First two standard type of questions about basic properties. Is quicksort stable and is it in place? Should be easy to answer if you just stepped through the algorithm and looked at some examples. As usual, we should look at the different list implementations. 
Quicksort works well for arrays. What happens for linked lists? Can it be done? Can it be done efficiently? Quicksort has this important choice that's made at the beginning of what's the pivot element. In terms of correctness, it doesn't matter, but it can influence the running time. You can see that we've got really bad behavior if we have a sorted array and we always take the first element to be the pivot element. Is there a general procedure that is going to find a better quality pivot? It has to be quick. We don't want to spend a lot of time deciding on the pivot. And it has to do better than the one we've already seen, the naive method of choosing the first element. Is there a method that you think is likely to work better? And as with merge sort, we have the same problem here. How do we solve the quick sort recurrence? The lecture we had on recurrence relations didn't touch that. You can have a look at it. The recurrence here is very much more complicated than ones we've seen before. How are we going to solve that? Right, so we'll see you next time when we go much further into sorting